Tonight, as it is, it is the last night. And uh, the last night, we have been saving it up. This guy that I'm bringing you on, it was so difficult having me here. I should say that. Um, go post, keep on changing. Like, I thought I was busy. Like, he's super busy. I think he's just pretending to be busy, isn't it? But anyway, we'll find out, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I want to introduce to you uh, Justin. And Justin, he's been, I've been hanging out with Justin. I think with everyone else that I brought in here, uh, Justin is the guy that I've been hanging out with a little bit longer. Uh, but I've been watching his journey. Uh, he's been an inspiration to me. And out of that, you know, uh, we keep on rubbing shoulders and exchanging notes on how are things doing, uh, even though we are in two different things that we do. Uh, but I also think that it's different, but very similar. You know, when um, the late uh, Nelson Mandela uh, was uh, uh, ill in hospital, they said the president is, uh, the former president is critically ill, but stable. And we're all like, what does that mean? Yeah, it's the same thing with me and uh, uh, Justin. You know, we're in different businesses, but similar, you know, right? I mean, you get it, man. Okay, fine, you get it, good. Without wasting time, let me bring in Justin, and he's going to take us away all the way to the top of the hour. But who is Justin? And let's bring him in and understand who is Justin Hurst. I did say you need to clap him. Clap. Yeah. I can feel it. Yeah, yeah. Clap it for him. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Justin, how's it going, man? <laughs> oh, TJ, critically ill but stable. That's so true. <laughs> It's so true. It's so true. But, but anyway. But Justin, I, I, at that point, I didn't understand it. I think it was emotions from my side, right? But now that I'm in business, um, critically ill but stable, I totally understand it now. Oh, know? yes. That, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So <clears throat> I do have a bit of a cough. So if it goes, I don't think it's corona. <laughs> it's just hey, the crazy I, weather we've had. But um, so if I, if I do cough, just forgive me for that. I, I'm a corona survivor, and um, uh, I, I could have spread it to you, actually. You do know that, right? I know, and I tested positive, so hurrah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll because uh, the time that I got corona, I had visited Justin, um, and the person that had also given it to me was in company when we had visited Justin, uh, wow. but we had kept COVID protocol. Justin, um, so I, I'm, I also have like a post-cough. Uh, at the beginning of the conference, I think it was kind of like there. Uh, so our audience, they are super, they've been accommodating us. Reta had the other day, uh, her daughter came in while she was presenting and we roll with the punches. <laughs> no, exactly. I mean, my son actually loves presenting. And if he just happens to join me tonight, then... <laughs> it is oh, what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, good stuff. All right, Justin. You, Justin, you you've been a banker for a while. He, I, I was a banker for for a very long time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and you decided to leave the the corporate world, being employed, um, having a good salary, traveling the world. Um, because you're working for the company Barclays, uh, and they're kind of like anywhere and everywhere. Um, no, absolutely. I mean, I had a great time. I had a fantastic time working through the corporate. Um, but, you know, when you come out of school, that's what you're trained for. You're geared to get into that, and that's what's seen as successful. And so there's definitely something inside which is like, um, if you get a job with the bank, if you get the promotion, if you get to travel, if you get relocated, it's success. And that's what's programmed into a university. So for many years, you know, I was chasing that. And, mm. and I thought I enjoyed it, and I, and I did. I did enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and, and I think I, I was in it for almost 10 years and I'd yeah. been to London, I'd been to Singapore, I'd been to South Africa, and I'm from Zimbabwe. So, you know, it took me around the world, gave me great opportunities, but there came a time <laughs> where I realized it's not me. It took a while, but there came a time. Awesome stuff. Right, and, um, and at the moment, um, and something else why I also connect with you, Justin, is that 
uh, over and above what you do. The other day I reached out to you and I said, Justin, I want to build a school. And you challenged me around building a school. And you said, why do you want to build a school? Um, and because of a journey that you have traveled for five years, where you are looking after a community, an underprivileged community, but you are actually taking it up from, it's not just building a school, or should I say just plugging in to solve the problem, but you, are, you guys are actually looking at a bigger scale in terms of the impact in that society. You, you, you want to give us yeah. a, a short snippet on that? So, you know, going back to the school scenario, I like it because I've walked that journey. Um, I'm part yeah. of an organization that builds schools. And as we went down that journey, it was like all good and well, we've got a school, but we've got no teachers. Okay. Right. Then you start looking for teachers and well, where do the teachers stay? What's their accommodation like? How are we looking after them? How are we teaching them? How are we training them? And that's when I realized it's, it's yes, the children benefit from it, but if we don't look at the holistic, then how do we solve the problem? And that's mm. very much the same problem that I've come up against in farming, which was a new entrant into farming. Great. Let's give money for people to start farms. But why do so many farmers fail? What right. is the reason for that? You know, why are, I mean, I've seen it world over. It's not South Africa. It's all over the world. Trillions yeah. of dollars put into farms that become cow sheds a year, two years later. And that's where my mind started going. And, and it was like, well, what's the reason? And it was the same thing. It's there's a lack of mentorship. There's a lack of teachers. There's, there's a lack of grounding in terms of reality. And that's where I felt right. we plug a gap um, in, in what I call the future of farming, um, because yeah. I believe in 10, 15 years time, every farm is going to be doing what we're doing. Um, it, it just is what it is. So yeah, that's Amazing. kind of you know, taken me on that journey to kind of where we are now, which, you know, through COVID and all has helped me to, to process a lot of it. So Amazing yeah. stuff. You, you, you are solving a problem and Lebo came in uh, this afternoon. Uh, Lebo is one of my boys who, who is taking um, luxury apartments into the townships. Hmm. And, and he's saying it doesn't mean that there ain't no money in the township, but it's oh, just not being presented. So he's solving a problem. Yeah. 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 Completely. Awesome Completely. stuff. All right. Let me not steal a lot of your time. Can I give you the reins so that you can go in and uh, preach the word of aquaponics? <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Uh, let's get Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks uh, very much for, for joining me on this uh, rather chilly Saturday evening. But I'm very excited to be closing off the, the conference and to be presenting you with, I'm hoping, something quite new, something a little bit different, um, something that might capture you uh, from the side. So what I want to present to you today is pretty much aquaponics. And... Uh, we're going to take you through through a shortish presentation to help visualize what I'm talking about. So aquaponics, uh, what is it? Well, the reality is five years, six, <laughs> maybe seven years ago, I'm losing track, seven years, somewhere there. I didn't know. Um, and it took me a while to get into it, to understand what it was. But the more I did it, the more fascinated I became with it. Um, and so five years ago, I started a company called Ictus. And the business over the last five years has pretty much grown. It's evolved. It's morphed. It's changed shape. But that's what entrepreneurship is. Um, so like uh, TJ said, uh, I'm Justin. Uh, I come from a fairly interesting background. I was born in Zimbabwe, studied in South Africa, 
worked pretty much all over the world for a multiple number of banks. Um, but I ended up coming back to South Africa um, when my wife was pregnant. <clears throat> and I, I got presented with an opportunity to, to acquire a piece of land. Um, and the land was pretty central in Midrand, quite close to work. And on that piece of land, the seller was doing a, a type of farming that I'd never seen. And I love farming. But this type of farming blew my mind. I saw an integration so natural, but yet so unnatural, that um, I was gripped by it. I purchased the property, I purchased the business, and from there, if this was born. Um, since then, we've started a number of different areas. We've got what we call Ictus Managed Farms, which is where we help people to farm. We've got an academy, a consulting. We've got a fresh produce uh, distribution. We have retail, online and physical. And we have the Ictus Foundation, which is uh, very close to me. Uh, essentially, the foundation is where we give back to farmers, farmers who, who need support, who need coaching, who need mentoring and who need help. So now I've confused everyone by saying this word aquaponics. It sounds futuristic, but what is it? Well, quite simply, aquaponics comes from two very, very different methods of farming. The first is aquaculture. The second is hydroponics. When those two come together, We've got aquaponics. Now, I've probably confused everyone even more <laughs> by throwing in more terms. So let's break it down. I get it's a combination of aquaculture and I get it's a combination of hydroponics. But once we understand those two farming methodologies, you'll understand more about what I do. So <clears throat> I'll come back to that, but aquaculture, at the end of the day is farming aquatic species. So this could be farming anything that lives in water from algae to perlamon to trout to tilapia to cob. I mean, anything aquatic um, that is farmed is aquaculture. Um, and in the background here, you can see one of the very first fish tanks we had. And in the simplicity, it's feeding fish and growing them. So there you see some red tilapia being fed, loving their feed. As they eat, they grow. <clears throat> As they grow, we cull, we sell. It's food and it's protein. And it's one of the most efficient forms of protein that there is. Then on the other side, hydroponics. It's the growing of plants in a soilless media using nutrient-rich water. Basically, in English, that means I'm growing plants without soil using water that has been enriched with nutrients. Now, a typical hydroponic farm enriches their water with chemical nutrients because that's the cheapest form of nutrient for the plant that they want to grow. And as you can see in this picture here in the background, this is, this is about a five hectare um, hydroponics farm growing mainly lettuce and mint. Um, and essentially all of those plants are above the ground and water is just flowing along the roots of those plants, feeding them what they need. So what does it mean if we bring these two farming methods together, fish farming and hydroponic farming or growing plants without soil. Well, when we bring these two together, we end up with a methodology of farming that utilizes 95% less water than conventional farming. So I am growing fish and I am growing vegetables. Fish need water to live and yet I'm using a fraction of the water that you use on your garden. That is because I recycle absolutely all the water that I can. The only water I lose 
is through evaporation and what the plants consume. The second reason why aquaponics is so revolutionary is that it comes in at a 30% lower cost than hydroponics. Why is it a lower cost? Well, the fish and the fish poop and that whole process provides the bulk of the nutrients I need to grow my plants. And as a result, it works out much cheaper to feed my fish than it does to buy hydroponic fertilizers. And for me, these two metrics leave very few other options available when it comes to choosing how to farm or how, uh, what method to choose when farming. <clears throat> And so when you dig deeper into this relationship between combining fish farming and plant growing, where the water from my fish goes to my plants, my plants extract the nutrition from that water and return clean water back to my fish is actually pretty much symbolic of what nature does. If you look at a river system and dams and reeds and weeds and plants and grass, it all works hand in hand. But the advantages of aquaponics don't stop at just two advantages. There are many, many more. One of which is that you can multi-crop, meaning you can grow a wide variety of plants at the same time. Now, you might say, well, duh, but the truth is every plant in a hydroponic environment needs very specific nutrition. And if I'm growing a lettuce and a tomato, they eat different things, they need different nutrients. Now, if I grew them hydroponically or traditionally, I've got to apply different fertilizers to the two crops. But in this method, I can grow both of those crops in the same system with very little changes to the type of feed those plants are getting. The second one that I, I love to hang on to is that it's certified by nature. What that means is um, you don't need fancy organic certification. If my product was not pure organic and I used any type of pesticide, herbicide, be it organic or not, that was remotely harmful to a human, it would kill my fish. And if it doesn't kill my fish, it definitely will kill the bacteria that the whole system depends on. I've spoken about water usage, the fact that one waste which from my fish, which is a waste in fish farming, becomes a beneficial source for another type of farming. You don't need fancy filtration. Because my, my uh, plants are much healthier, you'll see fewer pests less disease in your in your crops because your plants are being fed a much healthier diet. I mean, it's like us taking multivitamins, eating a healthy, balanced diet. We get sick less often. Um, and just to say today's like the first day that I haven't felt 100% in a very, very long time. Um, your yields, you're looking at four to eight times the yield versus conventional farming, meaning I can grow in a, in, in a small space I can grow up to eight times as much produce. I don't need artificial fertilizers and I can do it anywhere. So I can set up very, very close to my market. Meaning if my market is a hospital, I can set up a farm on the roof of that hospital. If my market's a school, I can set it up on the unused parking lot of that school. Your options are endless. So you get to choose where to farm as opposed to the land dictating where you can farm. And the last, obviously, it's incredibly environmentally friendly. There's very little wastage, very little power, very little water usage. And we all know that water is becoming one of the most uh, scarce resources in the world. They predict in five years' time South Africa will be in a water deficit meaning we are consuming more fresh water than we can get. So let's, let's face the reality. Water is not an unlimited resource for us. 
So <clears throat> how do we go about choosing where to farm? Well, the first is your market. And this is where this type of farming differentiates us because how I design and where I locate my system is dependent on what people want to eat, what's popular, and also how much does it cost to actually transport it. Now, the fact that I can be close to my market reduces most of my, my overheads. I've got to look at what does the seasons look like? What are the structures around? What is the water quality? How much is the electricity? Now, this method of farming does depend on electricity. So if I don't have electricity, well, I need solar or I need alternative forms of power. Here's a picture that um, brings back many, many, many smiles. So this was the first rainbow trout that uh, we grew out um, and harvested. And in the background, you can see a whole load of cauliflowers, tomatoes, kale, chives, spring onion. Um, and this was pretty early on in my journey. But what was really interesting with this was when I started aquaponic farming, obviously you farm fish and you farm plants. Now, what I found in my first couple of years was in Johannesburg, we have extremely cold winters and we have warm summers. But yet everyone around me was farming a fish that was almost impossible to keep alive in, in winter unless I had heating. And so I asked the question, why does nobody farm rainbow trout? It grows faster, it tastes better, and it's much more tolerant of the cold, and it can handle to a degree the temperatures we reach in summer. Professors, many, many professors, Experts told me you can't do it. You can't farm trout in Johannesburg. It's simply impossible. And obviously being me, I don't like being told what I can't do. So I went and got some trout and started to experiment. And we grew them out successfully for a year. And very interestingly, I'm wearing the same jacket as I am in this photo. So obviously winter's upon us. We started experimenting more as the farm grew. We started looking at the benefits of artificial lighting. What does artificial lighting do to the actual growth rate of my plants? The electricity use versus the additional revenue. And we found some really interesting results in that certain crops just need a couple hours of extra light through the winter and they grow perfectly well. This is our farm as we started to expand it. Um, to put it into picture, I was living at the property next door. I purchased a vacant piece of land uh, next to me, and we started to grow and expand our farm. As I got better and as we understood the methods, um, we then grew with that. And it's a very important note that you've got to grow within your means because when you are running a farm, even of this size, just the operating costs alone have the, the, the possibility to sink you unless you know how to mitigate all of those risks. We've grown some of the most beautiful tomatoes, some of the best lettuce in Joburg. And if anyone here is from uh, the midstream area, you'll, you'll have seen our produce in, in midstream super spa, uh, Ridge Littleton. Um, our, our lettuces are incredibly popular. When you taste it, it goes with the brand, taste the difference. It's pure, it's natural, it's organic, it's sweet, it's delicious. Um, our fish have ended up in uh, a number of food lovers. A lot of the top end restaurants in Johannesburg, some of the top restaurants source their fish from us um, because it is so fresh and so clean. Uh, we've ended up being able to get into the likes of pick and pay, spa and checkers, but all of that, came at a cost and it came with a learning curve that I was not expecting. So it all sounds good. It all sounds great. And everyone wants to now jump in to be an aquaponics farmer. But the reality that I've learned in my years farming is that 
there's a lot more to it. There's so much more to farming than any of us give the farmer credit for. When we buy something in the shop, we never stop to think, what has the farmer been through to deliver this product? When we are shopping the day after Christmas, we never think the farmer had to harvest that and have it delivered so it could get to the shop so I could just have the benefit of buying it after Christmas. So farming and the economics of farming is something that is complex on one hand, but I also feel not so complex. At the end of the day, we need to reduce our cost to produce and we need to increase profitability. Well, if you get those two right, the scale should make sense. I reduce my cost to produce because my fertilizers and water and the likes are so much lower. My profitability goes up because I tap into an organic market, which allows me to naturally sell my product for more. But it doesn't stop there. Over the years, we've set up systems all over the world. From This is a system in Mauritius. These guys were growing in an area that was apparently impossible to grow in. Um, this is how our farm is in Johannesburg. This is a farm in Durban um, that was set up a number of years ago. Here's the trout I was telling you, the very first batch of trout that we grew out in our water. This is a farm, the very first farm that was set up on top of a shopping mall. At Eastgate Shopping Centre, we set up the very first aquaponic farm on top of a shopping centre in Africa, and I'd probably say in the world. Now, the logic, if I have a farm above my customers, surely it should be profitable. This is my son, who no doubt you'll see just now popping his face in, enjoying fresh produce at that farm on top of a roof, eating freshly caught trout salad that didn't even have to move 10 meters to get to his plate. This is the future of farming. But when you look at the economics deeper, there's a lot of elements that go into getting what I call my cost per square meter of operations low enough in order to be able to make a profit. Now, your cost of operations is a lot more than just labor and electricity. It includes rent, fish food, fingerlings, pesticides, fungicides, um, and that's all organic pest control, test kits, petrol, consumables. Whichever way you look at it, you end up with a cost per plant. And as I dug deeper into this, I started realizing, well, economically, if I'm farming one square meter, of grow space and I grow 25 lettuce in that square meter and all of my operating costs come to 74 rand just to grow that square meter of lettuce in which I grow 25 heads of lettuce. It leaves me with a cost per lettuce of approximately three rand. Then I've got processing, I've got packaging, labeling, delivery. And if I look at the markets available to me, Johannesburg market, maybe two rand fifty a lettuce. A realistic supermarket might give me six rand, but an organic market might give me ten rand. So as you unpack, what I love with this method of farming is that it is so predictable in terms of what it's going to cost, how much you're going to get out, and because you can control most of the weather elements around you and reduce a lot of your costs, as I mentioned before, At the end of the day, it has to make financial sense. Now, as you can see from here, your margins are small. You don't have huge margins to work with. So if I have to output huge capital to start up my farm, I've got boreholes, ESCOM connections, groundworks. Um, I've got tunnels. I've got installation. I've got leveling. I've got digging. I've got you name it, cauldrons. Your capex goes up and up and up. Now, where's the margin for the farmer to recoup their capex at the same time be successful? It's very hard. Yes, I've got fish sales. 
which help. And, you know, in that small system I showed you just now, you're looking at harvesting about 1,300 kilos of fish a year. Gives you an extra 7,000 rand revenue per month. You might get 14 and a half thousand on that small system in veg sales, depending on what profit you sell it at. But the challenges get in the way of new farmers. There is no support. There's no education. Our education is so outdated that schools still teach us to plow, even though plowing is more detrimental to your yields in the long run. We don't have human capital. We don't have people trained to come work on our farms, especially the likes of aquaponic farms. The cost of inputs is going up all the time. And as a new farmer, how do I get access to scale? How do I get access to bulk purchasing when I don't need that much? Where do I get good fish? Where do I get good seedlings? How do I maintain my system? But what about the rest? Sales, HR, marketing, capital, infrastructure. These are the challenges that people are facing as farmers on a daily, weekly, yearly basis. So what we decided to do last year was completely turn our farm around and set up the first agri-hub business model. This business model was geared around offering all of the services that we learned, all of the clients we had gained, all of the expertise that we had, and share it with new farmers who would rent tunnels. They would rent the tunnel, the aquaponics farm. They would get access to our clients. We would pack their produce and deliver their produce for them and give them a fair price for what our customers paying for a processed product. But they get daily consultation. They get regular training. They don't have to worry about HR, finance, sales, offices, internet, you know, support teams. We take care of that. And what we did was put together this support model that brought everything together and said, if farmers had the opportunity to go and just farm, and not worry about sales, marketing, packaging, distribution, HACCP global gap, um, HR problems, um, you know, financing the entire farm. Because what we found was a small farmer wants to start. Well, you need a pack room. You need a vehicle. You need an office. You know, no matter how big or small you are, you needed these things. And as we started to be able to share those, the costs came right down. And as you can see, getting the model right with an initial capital outlay on the right of approximately three and a half million to install all of the core infrastructure. For every tunnel I put in, on that tunnel, I put an investment of about half a million. And just with my monthly rentals, less my core basic costs, that tunnel is repaid within four and a half years. For the farmer coming in, yes, they pay me the rent. They pay all of their expenses. They get their produce sales and they make a profit. But the difference here is they only need 121,000 to start farming, not three and a half, four million. So with 121,000 and one and a half years later, with the right support, that farmer is able to be Profitable to learn, to understand, to, to learn the tricks of the trade that the generations haven't passed down to them. But most importantly, secure the future of agriculture in South Africa. So as I mentioned within the hub, there's a lot of services that need to be provided. There's the academy. This is regular training. It's courses that we do that the... The, the, that the hub renters are part of. They go through all of the training from very basic to absolutely advanced commercial. We've got a hatchery on site where we're breeding fish for them of the highest quality and ready on demand. We've got a construction team that's there ready to set up 
to fix, to maintain, to keep the system running. So on weekends, the farmer can have a weekend. On Christmas, the farmer can have a Christmas. Our pack house is fully set up. We've got Looks like we, we're having a technical challenge there, but let's see. I think um, Justin is going to come back in a minute or so. Um, but what I just want to find out uh, from people as we go along now, you know, um, and I'm going to ask Jenna, uh, maybe Justin doesn't know that actually he is lost connection. Uh, if we could call Justin, please, and let's just alert him uh, so that, you know, if he doesn't know, then he knows. Cool, awesome. Right, whilst we are at this one, is I just want to hear from you guys. Type one if this is new information for you, and um, and if it is not, then type two. All right. I just want to hear from you guys. Is this new information for you? Like if you've never seen this before, or you've never heard of this before, and this is like totally new for you. Like you can have a farm with no farm, right? No, well, no, not farm, with no land. So you're farming on water, like you can have something there. Uh, and I see a couple of people saying one, one, one. Okay, good, good, good. All right, waiting for your comments there, right? So this is like total no information to you. Uh, and I totally have like one person who have said, nah, they've had this before, right? Now, of the people that have had this before, is it something that you would do, right? Of the people that have had this before, is this something that you would be able to do? Okay, I see Justin is back on again. Hey, Justin, it looks like the internet is playing uh, with you there. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you fine. Sorry, the internet just died, it bombed out to me. I actually have no idea. I think I was talking to space. I'm not sure where we ended <laughs> up. Good, good. You want to take it on onto the presentation of the slide uh, where you were talking about the economics of it. Um, so you were kind of like going for a minute, actually. Not, it's not longer than that. Oh, about so a minute. Bring up your yeah, yeah. So you, you didn't go for a long time. You can just bring up your presentation <laughs> and then I'll bring up. Okay, give me one and, second. And I just asked, whilst you were going there, I just asked the people, man, to say who have had this before or it's for their first time. And a lot of people, Justin, are saying this is total new information to them. They've never had this before. Um, yeah. Cool. I'm just going to go back to the back. Okay, cool. Andrew. So I'm guessing we ended up somewhere around here. Yeah, so, so you ended off at, um, at, at the 3.4 million, and that's where you need to, to set it all up. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, so what I was saying, this is actually the crux of it. So if I'm starting as a new farmer, I'm looking at spending anything between 3.5 to 4 million to start farming. That's just the reality of it. Um, but if we get that as a core investment up front through the hub method, then the farmer um, only has to pay their rental fee. They only have to have a capital of about 121000 which is recouped in about 1.3 years, before they start to become net positive after paying back their loan. For every tunnel as an investor that I'm investing in, I'm looking at about a four and a half year repayment for that capital investment, including maintenance, uh, insurance, and all the rest. Now, if you look at the difference between 120,000 Rand to start farming versus 4 million Rand, the risk is so much lower. And with the support services all around, 
I'm talking a full proper academy and training facility where people learn the ins and the outs day to day. There's a hatchery for them to get quality, disease-free fish when they need them. They've got support teams on site if something breaks down. This gives the farmer the chance to take a Sunday or for Christmas off. Um, again, adding to work-life balance. The pack house takes care of all the stress of filleting, processing, packing, distributing. Because let's face it, if I'm a farmer, why am I expected to be a marketer, a sales agent, a driver, a distribution agent? That's what's expected of a lot of the small startup farmers. So at the end of the day, when we bring the hub concept together, what we're looking to achieve is the ability to fast track the future um, of South African farmers without the need for huge capital outlay, but most importantly, ensuring that funds that are put into agriculture have multiple rewards. Because these farmers, when they're ready, are able to go spend three and a half, four million for their own farm at the right size and not make the mistakes that 90% of the farmers are doing. So I'm glad I got to kind of wrap that up and you know just summarize uh, my thoughts around agriculture uh, to talk a bit about you know for me it's just a different type of real estate it's a different type of property and what I've said to everyone that I work with is the land that you're farming on that land must be appreciating and working for you it must be in the right area it must be in the right location and so 10 years time when or 15 20 years time when you want to sell your farm that land has appreciated substantially um, and that has made you good returns, not only the farm. So on that, I think I'd like to open up for, for any questions or, or comments on this. Awesome stuff. Uh, thanks, Justin. You can hear me there, right? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, good. So, so what I'm going to do, right, um, we've got a few minutes. I'm going to do a one song uh, so that we can take a short break. And I'm going to ask, uh, and when we come back, we're going to have Justin. We're going to have a panel discussion. And within that panel discussion, it is going to facilitate your questions as well as we go along. So, Joe, I can see Joe is here already. And uh, if you're to give me like a minute or so, so that we can connect everyone into the into the uh, panel discussion, that would be great. Um, and uh, in the meantime, fire away with your questions. Fire away with your questions. All right. Okay. Good stuff. let me come back and let me bring in all my guests back again uh, so thanks again for being with us and uh, I'll bring in uh, let me bring in Justin Justin back boom he is here and uh, he's still alive yes good and coughing and on the bottom there 
we've got Joe. Joe Biden! How's it going, man? Yeah. Hi, guys. Good evening, yourselves. Awesome. Awesome. Right. Um, for, for a lot of people, now you now know who Joe is. He's been hanging out with us, and Joe is our fund manager. And you all know that we've got the Section 12J, uh, which is a fund that we are wanting you, I did say this before, that I want you to invest alongside of us. And um, the one of the things that we are going to be investing in is aquaponics. So Justin has the IP. He has done it. He's got the results in Mauritius, in Tobo Eastgate. He's in Midran. He's in multiple places. And the problem that we are solving here is that um, Justin is able to do this. He's doing it. He's growing. Um, but with a section 12J like this one, we can scale. Uh, we can go whilst Justin is running on the side. We are also running on the side. And out of that, we can grow. So when I went through to his uh, hub, I said to Justin, hold on, man. We looked at the numbers and we already have two of our own stands, empty plots that we've got. One in Pretoria, Justin and his team, they're busy with the designs. Uh, Justin, I'm waiting for our designs, yeah? <laughs> okay, right. So so we're waiting for the designs to come through. So that farm is going to hit the, the ground running. And I want to say this, whether you join us or you don't join us, we, we're going ahead, right? Uh, but I do want you to join us, right? Because this is something of national service to ourselves, making sure that we do have security, um, um, uh, security um, on our on our food uh, for you and me, right? Uh, that's what it's all about. So, with your questions, I am going to go in. But I want to start off with a question to Joe, because Joe is the fund manager here. Yeah. Joe, the import. We are in two things. We are in student accommodation, and we are in. We want to go into aquaponics. Why? Why? Why two different things that are different? Uh, the the asset classes are different here. Uh, we are in student accommodation and aquaponics, but like many of funds, they just go with one thing, right? But why should we de-risk ourselves and diversify and do? um two things um yeah yeah well tj good question there um so obviously we wanted to diversify our portfolio and uh, and farming is a, is a great agriculture is a great uh, new area to expand into um and you know it's it's a, it's a, it's a nice cash positive venture to invest in uh it gives you great returns on a very short term basis uh, it's it's obviously it fits our model perfectly uh, with, with the other properties we're running. So that's it's definitely a no-brainer for us. 100%. So I just want to add on to what Joy has said there. Um, I think the fundamentals of our fund is that we want to play in real estate. And we looked at all the other asset classes in real estate and we said, okay, fine. Which ones do you want to play in? We picked up student accommodation. We're already doing that when we got the fund. And now we went in, we're doing into aquaponics. However, I want to also say um, uh, over and above that, for some people, they might say, no, but aquaponics is totally different. Well, it's still land, and on top of it, you just have a different business. And, and if you're to look into M5 as a business, uh, we have no more tenants, land again, no more tenants, a different business. And um, wow. Justin has been there before, he doesn't like that type of model uh, because he can evict his um, um, his tenants much faster than we can evict on the normal renting of tenants. Um, but over and above that, we've got student accommodation and now we've got aquaponics. Mm -hmm. Just now, I want to come to you, man. Um, the, the, the partnerships that we've put together in here, um, in terms of scaling, how far can we go here? Because I think maybe for some people, they're like, you know, th this is not really their business, you know, and then we we'll see the viability of how big this thing can go. Look, I, I, I truly believe that this, this can go really big um, with the right people, with the right staff, with the right knowledge. But at the same time, 
it has to be proven. And as you prove it, you grow it. Because every, mm. every region in South Africa has a different climate profile. I mean, our farm in Krugersdorp is completely different to our farm in, in Midrand. And that is because they are a good few degrees warmer. You know, I go from there and I'm fine and I come to Midrand half an hour later and I'm, I need my jersey. And if I was to implement what we're doing in Midrand on large scale in Krugersdorp, uh, it wouldn't be as successful because these are the things that, that get kind of understood and, and, and grown within it. But the demand for produce of quality is, is substantial. And the demand for organic is growing faster than South Africa will ever be able to supply. We simply don't have enough organic farms. Um, and, and that's where we play is in healthy eating. And healthy, organic, natural, nutritional food that doesn't exist. You go into spa or food lovers and try buy anything that's remotely organic. And if I were to tell you what the farmer did to that product, the farmer himself will not eat it. So why are we eating those products? Just because it doesn't say sprayed with A, B, C, D, E can cause A, B, C, D, E. So the reality is the consumers, as they put pressure on the market for healthy alternatives, for me, that market is huge. And if we can do it at the same cost as a traditional farmer, then who's the competition? Mm. Good. Thanks on that, Justin. Um, someone here has just um, uh, sent in a comment here. Rose says, is this business profitable anywhere in the country or the areas of convenience? I mean, Justin, you can go on this one. Sure. I mean, Rose, it's a, it's a great question. Um, look, it can be profitable anywhere with the right design and operation. And as I mentioned, one of our biggest challenges in South Africa that any farmer faces is multiple seasons. It's either summer or it's winter. So it's either too hot, it's too cold. So you've got to be able to understand your location and the climate and be able to adapt for that sufficiently. Um, so I would say the most profitable areas are the ones that have um, the most constant climate because they're the easiest to work with. It's either hot or it's cold and I can grow the same thing all year round. Um, but as I, as I have to adapt my infrastructure to change my climate, it becomes a little bit more expensive in the setup and the operation in order to ensure that I can maintain that climate all year round and maintain that climate. So it's a good question. At the end of the day, it can be profitable anywhere, but I would say it's definitely going to be more profitable in regions that have less uh, fluctuation in terms of hot and cold summer and winter. Okay. Um, Joe, um, within our fund, right, um, I think we, I wanted, we wanted us to have this conversation in here that we are having um, so that we can demonstrate what exactly we are uh, venturing into in our colleagues from what it is. So the funds, people who will invest in the funds, they, they do have the benefit, obviously, of, the, um, of their taxes, which is number one, T. Uh, but in this case, Joe, people are not going to open the, 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 the... There's no building that you've got, unlike, you know, when we are investing in student accommodation. You've got the land, you've got the structures that you're going to be putting in, and Justin is saying, you know, in a, in a period of around about three to four years, you have finished off paying for that, you know, in terms of your returns that are coming. Um, now, just walk us through there from an ownership perspective. So the fund will own the land, the infrastructure, um, so everyone wants to get their share certificate. Is, is it different? Are we going to manage this differently or what? No, well, yeah, again, TJ, uh, yeah, very spot on with that question. 
So what we need to realize this is that uh, a farm is still a property. Um, right. And the property we invest in is properties that generate a cash flow or income. So uh, a farm is just a different type of, of uh, 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 property for our portfolio. And obviously the buildings on top of the, the property on the farmland, um, you know, the, the tunnels and everything associated with that generates that income, you know, in the same way that the tenant would, would generate income for us being a landlord, uh, those property that, uh, that those tunnels will, will do the same thing. Um, so a person that invests in, in aquaponics and, and the, the farm process itself um, will absolutely, will definitely generate a, a great return. They will receive their share certificates. They will receive the, you know, the tax certificates for, for them to get back the, the tax rebates. That's all very crucial things. You know, that's, that's what makes a good investment a great investment. You know, if you get that additional bonus of getting your tax rebates back and investing in a very profitable farming venture. Um, so again, it's based on property. Uh, you know, a, a farm is a property. Uh, it's the lowest risk uh, um, investment that you can make is property. So, you know, nobody likes to talk about it, but you know, if, if anything goes wrong, guys, we still have the property and we secured in that sense that uh, you know, you, you've got an underpinned asset that, that, uh, that drives the whole investment process. So lowest mm. risk returns. That's the type of properties we're looking for. So Justin, uh, we we had uh, Jeff. Um, you remember, guys? I told you my next child. I'm still talking to general people for us to have another child. Uh, I think um, jo J Jeff 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 is a good name for a child. It's going to be a millionaire. We've got Joe, uh, our Joe Miller, uh, who manages Justin. Joe Joe, he's a local. Uh, he's a um, Jeff is a local guy, and he manages three billion rand. And we had him here on when did we have him? Thursday, right? Yeah. Thursday night, yeah. Uh, Thursday night, um, and and we were talking about different asset classes, and he appreciates what we are doing. Um, and there's someone who's also seasoned in um, in uh, venture capital uh, investments is like, yeah, uh, he thinks that it's good to go into such kind of like like that because. Um, he was actually cautioning around maybe going into things like technology, even though technology might have like a big spike. So everyone wins, yay, but it's nothing tangible. And in our world, there is something that is tangible that we can recoup if monies are lost. But there is a question here. Um, and this question, I'm going to pack it to Justin. And it says, quite interesting. This is Nelson Mopala. Uh, I hope I didn't feature a certain payment. How do did you go about farming on top of this get more? Any challenges to be shared uh, on that journey? Ah, uh, Nelson, good question. Uh, it took us about two years to get that project to life. Um, wow. At the end of the day, it's corporate politics. So we spoke to to the you know Liberty Two Degrees who own the asset went to them and said, guys, you have so much parking that's never used. It's completely idle. It's empty. Imagine if we could put a farm that offset all the carbon from your cars that are parking in the parking lot and your customers can come and get organic produce and the restaurants can have fresh produce supplied. Imagine what it could be. So they bought into the idea, but there was a huge amount of corporate politics back and forth, up and down, left and right. And then there was being loaded as a supplier and then we went into a partnership. So it, it took a long time, um, but it was beautiful to see a vision come to life in, in terms of that. However, um, there are probably easier people to approach when it comes to, to utilizing space and agreements and all the rest. Um, and we see it everywhere. We see prisons with empty land. We see schools with empty land. We see hospitals with empty land. Um, and uh, there, there are plenty parking spaces that need to be used up with something a little bit more useful than nothing. So lots of challenges for sure. But persevere, persevere and come to a win-win with the landlord. Okay, awesome stuff. And that model can be replicated anyway. Um, yeah. You know, um, 
always I always tell people that you know when you see me posting on Facebook or anywhere else and I'm like, yay, I closed the deal. It does not necessarily mean that I found that deal yesterday. Uh, it has taken us a bit of time. Sometimes I think the longest deal that I've ever been has been three years, you know, trying to make it work. And Justin, you have also just shared now. Uh, we were dating uh, uh, these guys here at, uh, uh, at Eastgate Mall for two years. So that means that money going in, money going in, money going in, and now you have to pay the profits. Um, yeah. Joe, what is, the minimum, what is the minimum investment here that uh, if anyone is interested uh, to, to, to come into the fund um, on this? opportunities that we are going to be doing here. What do you think, what, what is the minimum that they can invest in? Yeah, well, TJ, uh, the fund is set up currently to accommodate investments from 50,000 Rand up and upwards. Um, mm. You know, initially, initially a Section 12J with all the benefits of getting your tax rebates back was only for people that could invest a million Rand and above. Um, so we've dropped that number down significantly to 50,000. Uh, so all the benefits is there for our investors. Um, and uh, in, into the aquaponics farm, um, I, I think there's, uh, if it takes 121,000, um, you know, obviously gr grouping grouping of some some capital, capital there to, um, you know, get people to, to uh, um, you know, get these tunnels up and running. Um, so yeah, 50,000 for the fund. And then uh, it would be more specific when, w with regards to the sort of tunnels and everything that goes up in the form. Um, you know, just to answer that question for you. Without the land, uh, Justin indicated that the entire hub is going to cost around about 3.5 million. I'm just rounding it off here. Um, yeah. And um, obviously, the land would then be needed. Maybe it might be a million, a million five, just depends on where you're buying the land um or a little bit more um a, what, what's the maximum then we, we spoke about the minimum of investments but what's the maximum yeah so uh you know all these benefits that the the tax man is giving us uh we, we can't exceed an investment of two and a half million um and for, for for that for the individual but obviously if you're a business and uh, and you want to expand into into uh into farming uh, to diversify your, your own investments as well as a business, you can invest up to five million. You know, so that's a it's it's quite a decent number for for a business to to expand into. Right, right. And I'm just, I will come back to you, but I want to ask you a question here that's uh, going uh, through to Justin, um, and I I'm just be prepared for us to answer in terms of returns. Uh, someone has just asked that question there. So what is the return? um that i will get if i'm to invest there but justin here's a question for you if one is interested can the team uh guide and support one to build the fund um you, you and this is something that i love about you uh justin you don't talk alone um you want to talk about the teaching that you guys do as well to individuals who are not going to partner up with us they want to get their hands dirty and do it for themselves and find a market for themselves and maybe you know just just run it through how best can you help them no 100 percent. i mean that's why we're here so you know you can either go to our website aquaponics.africa or reach out to to m5 they'll give you details but at the end of the day we're here to support a farmer every step of the way from training to acquisition to design to development to implementation um, and, and a lot of our farmers are being plugged into the the hub model where they farm for a couple of years before they spend their money on their own farm um, so so we're here really to, to help every step literally from i don't know what this thing means but i'm excited about it i want to learn more all way through to i'm ready to go help you to design and, and set it up so just go to our website you can reach out you can email myself or tj um and he'll help join the dots on that but uh, rest assured if you're interested um we'll definitely be here to help you it, it looks like tokozile's mind is spinning um so she she, she also 
she also sent a follow-up question is it possible to partner with government to utilize schools and some of their land uh, for such you know to uh, we designed the step up conference for people like you um the, the information that we're giving is is to nudge you to get you thinking and things like that and this is what exactly what's happening so high five to you but uh justin uh you can go for it man so takizile you think dealing with corporates is bad try the government that's another story <laughs> Of course we can utilize that land. Of course we can utilize the the prisons. Of course we can utilize the hospitals. But it's it's politics. It's politics. If you're willing to deal with the politics, yes, of course we can use that land and we should use that land. Why do we have prisons with acres of land with weeds? And yet there's hundreds and thousands of prisoners needing to learn to be rehabilitated. to learn new jobs we got school children needing to learn the reality of the future of farming they need to learn how to farm properly so i would love to see it in every school i'd love to see it in every hospital and every prison um and the more people that go out and advocate for it then it will be possible but government yeah me let's just assume that uh, towardsile she's got some inside information that she can reach out to someone uh, not so sure yeah. from which side of the fence but uh, let's hope so <laughs> jo cool. um i i just want to quickly share um a screen here that uh you have shared before and can you just walk us through the returns in terms of investments here um what are what are the people going to get you know if they are to invest uh in our in the section 12j whether be it for student accommodation and whether it's going to be for aquaponics what is the returns yeah um tj again um so we currently you know the biggest benefit that one can achieve in investing in a in a venture like this is um you know considering your tax bracket you know we've spoken about tax brackets in the past where we've we've asked individuals to identify it and we showed them how to identify it but just as a as example if you're on a 45% tax bracket that's the highest tax bracket there is um guys we will be um you know you'll be receiving 45% of your tax monies that's been paid over to SOS on that 45% tax bracket you receive back and uh, and obviously the fund will look after you at a 7.5% dividends yearly uh for the five year period it gives you a total return over the five years of 83% yeah and to to actually narrow that down per year it get, comes down to 17% uh return on your investment which is exceptional so most of us is not on a 45% tax bracket is quite a few people that are but you know we if you have a look at them more average tax bracket of 30% guys you know that means that if you make investment of 100000 rand uh you'll be able to get back 30000 rand as additional income but your investment of 100000 will still grow and obviously we we offering the 7.5% dividends and over the five year period we're looking at 68% growth which is exceptional um and also then to narrow it down per year that would be 14% uh for businesses at 28% guys 28% 100000 rand investment 28% 28000 rand in your pocket uh, and then 7.5% per year in total we're looking at 66% and also that's we've got a, a average per year of 13% then um and looking at a lowest tax bracket of 18% 100,000 rand investment as example it's 18,000 back in your pocket and then 7.5% growth per year as dividends a total growth of 56% and we're looking at get at the at the average of 11% for individuals at the lowest tax bracket guys so that's that's what we're offering um so we we we're looking at all different ranges of the of the of the tax sector here, from the highest income 45% to the lowest 18% Mm. Joe, the question that I want to ask of you. Um 
I, I've always break to say that at M5 Property Addicts, we, we try to, to give you the best results of your money. We want your money to work harder uh, than what uh, than than we it might be sitting at maybe at the banks or something like that. But I don't want to give an example of the banks. We all know what the banks is giving you right now. Um, so I don't want to speak about you know uh, how can we help you and um, the zebra banks. You just go and check on their website. You know, like for the same amount of money, how much you're going to be getting as a return. Um, Joe, let's talk about other. Um, um other section 12 j in comparison to ours here right because we are playing with more assets that are giving better returns uh but in general where are we in where how are we benchmarking with others yeah so uh, obviously tj there's there's many types of section 12 j companies out there uh you know we we base our returns on property which is the lowest risk and mm. for the lowest risk investments in property uh we are one of the best funds out there to to invest in so obviously you can you can venture into different uh, areas of business uh, but obviously property has got a lowest risk it's got an asset underpin um so if you if you want to be assured of your returns and you want to be reassured of your investment that the value in your investment will still stay there for a full five-year period um, we're performing very very well Okay, good. Justin, I'm going to come to you a little bit harder here, mate. Um, um, or as we say it uh, back with the Queen. Hey, did you know that the Queen is now single? <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. And I know it's not funny, but she's, she, you know, she's single now, you know, so she's available, you know what I mean? But anyway, let me not go there. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you know she has another... taken up already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On another There's note... been a few people in the waiting for a number of years. So... <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, Justin. Anything that looks good, it's, it's got a bad side to it. Mm. What is the worst that can happen on on aquaponics? <laughs> so uh, I, 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 look, I, I've I, seen I, it all. I, I, I've looked I, it all. Yeah. Oops, Who, who's sneezing by you? Uh, that's Mark. Oh, sorry, man. Well, I can see the whole house is big. <laughs> 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 okay, but, you, you um, go. Yeah, so look, it's the one thing to realize with farming is farming is risky in terms of the the unreliable power supply. We can lose fish with ESCOM. If ESCOM goes down for days and days, often our power mm. backups cannot handle it. <clears throat> and we've had times where you know, a New Year's Day or New Year's Eve, big thunderstorm. How many times does that happen? Power goes off, something shorts. ESCOM technicians can't come out on New Year's Day. You can't get any spares. You know, three days later, eventually power is restored. How prepared are you? Um, there's that. Then there's the unpredictability of weather. Extreme hot, extreme cold. You know, we can't predict that. And that can bring on certain disease with plants. And we can do our best to preempt and predict. But at the end of the day, being a farmer, especially organic farming, it does contain risk. But it's about how do you mitigate those risks? And what I mm. love with what we're doing is it mitigates the risk for the farmer. It mitigates the risk for the investor because the investor is almost removed from the risk of farming the farmer is so passionate and their livelihoods depend on it that by hook or crook they make sure that they do the best they can mm. so for me you you, you de-risk both sides the best you can but farming is risky it just is you know there are things that are unpredictable that we don't mm. know but we do our best to put in as much as we can to 
um, mitigate those risks as best as possible. Spe speaking of the uh, of the um, electricity, there, um, you know, I mean, I'm speaking to you guys, the two of you guys. You are very instrumental in 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 getting this to work. Uh, so surely we should have some mitigation of sort, uh, especially if we're talking about uh, about electricity. Um, for now, Absolutely. a three point four could, could we top up maybe with solar? Could we top up with a backup generator um, as a layer to just make sure that you know we are hundred percent covered, no matter what <laughs> no, we are running? I, I agree. So we run with solar, okay? Right. Which is great until there's a break in. <laughs> then it's not 100%. great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But let me give you this example that happened to us. We've got solar. We have a three uh, phase 21 kVA generator set, and we have ESCOM. One thunderbolt blew up mm. the generator, tripped the solar, and took ESCOM out for three days. Wow with surge protection so again learning curve improve surge protection and 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 <laughs> but um but as it comes to it's like the, the odds of that happening are, are incredibly small and and since then we've adjusted a, a lot of how we do our wiring and our earthing and you know spike conductors and all the rest on the farm mm. Mm. But it's, yeah. I li I it's like one of those things. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I like the fact that we, we're talking about this and our partner investors who are going to join us on the fund or those who have already joined us, they can hear these things. Because I always say to people, um, potentially you're trusting the banks out there. You don't actually know who you are, who is managing your money, mm -hmm. right? and and you are trusting them with your money and and on here we are here tonight we are having the conversation we're telling you the the, the good and the bad uh who are you gonna trust you know um and and that's just my point out out there to the people to say things have changed you need to wake up you need to wake up about where you're putting your money uh you just you need to put money on people that you know People that you trust, people like people have money in some places. They don't even know where that investment is, and yeah. we're showing you where the investment is. Um, like like Justin said, his farm, he, where he stays, the neck in, in the where the farm is literally next door. Um, mm -hmm. Iskate, who doesn't know where Iskate is? Just give me a zero if you don't know where Iskate is. Give me a zero, right? Like, I'm waiting for those zero if you don't know where Iskate is. Tell me. So now you got a bright conversation, right? And you can say, at Iskate, one of my partners, yeah? You can say that because Justin is one of our partners. So no one, everyone knows where Iskate is. Nobody has said nothing. Oh, what? Someone says, Mashmet, where are you from? Someone much might says they don't know where 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 Iskari is. Probably they're from out of the country. But nonetheless, um, you can now have a, a, a bright conversation and say, one of my partners we are investing in on top of Iskari. How cool is that for a bright conversation? You know, um, Joe. You know that that sounds sexy, isn't? No, it really, really does. It just shows your credibility. You know, it's all about credibility and and working with individuals that's done it before. Uh, you know that's a that, that's a that's a big thing to focus on. You know, there's a lot of people that talk the talk, uh, you know, but when when it comes to the walk, that's a different story. Yeah, awesome. Why are we partnering up with Justin? And I just want to put it out there that why are we partnering up with Justin? He's done it. He's doing it. He teaches it, and that's the reason why we're partnering up with Justin. We don't have to go and reinvent the wheel. He's already doing it, so we're plugging into his systems, and that's how our our um, uh, section 12J is going to be able to grow, and he becomes the kingpin in terms of quality assurance. He, he, you had him; the contracts are there. 
And all of those things are lined up. What we just need to do is to produce the land, produce the funds. Justin and his team are going to go to work. It's the same thing in student accommodation. Reta, she is managing all the student accommodation with her team, right? And it's the mm -hmm. same thing. Who is responsible for managing the money? That guy there, John, uh, mm -hmm. Joe. Joe, he went to school to manage people's money. He took the test, I didn't, right? Mm -hmm. um, and out of that, collectively as a collaboration, we start making your money work harder for you and for us. And that's what this is all about. So Justin, thanks a lot for your time. Any closing comments from your side? Uh, just to say um, thanks for your time and yeah, your trust in us. You know, it goes back way before any of this, which is great. Um, and it will transcend a lot more. So thanks for your time. I'm glad I got to share. I'm glad I got the opportunity to close out. Um, yeah, so thank you very much and absolutely all the best to, to everyone. Invest wisely. You often only get one or two chances to do it. So um, be smart, um, be wise, and do it well. So, TJ, thank you. Um, from your side, I really appreciate it. All right, Justin, take care, man. Right, and uh, that was Justin and uh, Joe. Any closing comments there, man, before we go? Yeah, TJ, um, something very important, you know, I've been waiting for you to come up through the discussion, but guys, we have got insurance in place. We've got insurance on our properties. We've got insurance on the, on the farms and the farming activities. You know, even, even if big things happen on the farm that you don't see coming, we have insurances in place to cover those, those issues. Um, so we, we're not just left up to our own means to, to work on it or work through it. Uh, we, we cover ourselves, and, and by, by that fact, we cover you as well, the investor. Uh, so as you can see, we're working hard to, to grow your, your monies. So we're looking for investments to come in, and uh, as soon as we get it, we'll put it to work, and uh, it will work pretty hard for us. Awesome stuff. Thanks a lot, Joe. Um, the guy next to us having a, a braai, uh, so I want to go to the braai. So, Joe, we'll, we'll see you later, man. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Okay, awesome stuff. Well, that was Joe, our fund manager. Um, he's been he been here. You had Joe. He's managing all the funds, making sure that you know he is. He reports back to SARS. He reports back to the financial service board and things like that. And that's his job in the team. That's why we partnered up with him. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are done for twenty twenty one. It's been an amazing journey so far that we've taken together all the way from last Monday. No, from the previous Monday. And we came in, people like me came through and I spoke. And I hope that I inspired you. I was able to educate you. I was inspired with Joe. I was inspired with Joey. I was inspired with uh, Lithle. Uh, I took action on what Lithle said today. That was my first time. I took heed of what Karen said. I'm already started pushing my team to say, how can we do Airbnb? And we've already started putting in some plans together. And it's something that I had forgotten that I can do it all year round. And we're going to be doing that. And I am not stopping doing it. That is Airbnb, né? Um, during the seasons that we do it, which is off season for us within the Cape. Uh, on our properties that are of student accommodation, making sure that we maximize the, the, the process. Who else has inspired me? Um, I was inspired with Lebo, who came in. Gareth blew my mind. He, he didn't blow my mind. He kind of like hit me hard, like, Wah! like, TJ, if you die, what's going to happen to you? Wah! Wake up. You need to sort out your affairs, right? That's kind of like how it felt to me, right? Ama. Coach Ama, whoa, yeah, right. Like, I can go on mentioning each and every person that came through. Set my boy, uh, come on. So who's decided that they're going to be joining me in July for the course? I'm not, you know, like, if, if, if you registered coming here, you're going to get our um, email. That 12 months program that I'm talking about, that's starting up in, the, in July. And we're going to go in for the whole year. 
and those that want to change their lives, those that want to push, to step up, those that are wanting to go the extra mile. This is no longer just about buying properties, wara wara, right? I'm going to open up M5 property addicts like that. Too. And then you're going to come in. That's called, and, and you're coming in like that. You're going to learn for 12 solid months. We will have a workshop dedicated for student accommodation. You learn theory. We go on a student accommodation property. We learn, we learn, we learn together. I show you the secrets. I show you what we're doing on those properties. You go to your business, you replicate it. I can do that because I have student accommodation properties. I can take you to the next one, which is blocks of flats. Show you. One day it's learning is theory. Show you the actual property. Open up the world of uh, blocks of flats. How can I be able to do that? Because I have those properties I can show you, right? How does that work? If you're struggling, I don't want to say if you're struggling with finding uh, private money, every investor needs to understand how to raise money. What Justin is doing when he was here today, that's also a form of raising money, right? So I've partnered up with him now and we're doing this thing together. So we're going to be also theory and practical. How do we manage all of these assets? And that's that whole 12 months program. So for some of you, you might be joining us on that one. Uh, it is going to be an amazing journey. You're going to get a coach over and above. You're going to be having access to the M5 Property Addicts team over and above that. We can travel the country together and uh, it will come with a cost. Obviously, it will come at a cost. Uh, uh, so I'm just going to say to you, as I close off 2021, 2022 is still coming up. We've got our guests lined up. Uh, all the way from United States, some of them, and some of them are local. I do want to mix these things so that we can learn from the best and learn what is relevant, mix the two, and make it work for you so that you can step up in your space. My name is, do I need to say that? I don't think I need to, isn't it? It's been a great pleasure. I want to thank all of our sponsors who have sponsored us so far, in particularly Expello. Uh, Expello, I'm sure you've joined in with Expello, and I'm sure you took in the discount that they gave us. I think it was 10%, I think. Yeah. Uh, so you can take on, on that program. They've been great to us. They sponsored us. They made this happen. M5 Property Addicts, boom, boom. Made love for you. Cash flow forever. Okay. And uh, M5 Property Varsity, which is the school that is dedicated to teach you how to become a successful investor they have also parted out some money on this one. And the property managers that we also utilize, which is Frostpeak. Uh, I thank you, Bevan, thanks very much for your donations in here and making this um, uh, program that's been going in for the last couple of days a reality. Without you guys, without allowing me to do what I'm doing now, none of these conversations will be a reality. So ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are right now, if you can show some love and say thank you to them, that will be amazing. Especially if you have gained any knowledge from them. It is Expello, that's number one. Frostpeak, number two. My, uh, uh, my student house, uh, um, number three. And obviously, um, M5 Property Varsity. Thank them for allowing me to do what I have done. And all our guest speakers that came through from far close by uh, via the internet, I really thank you for coming through. And it's been an amazing, and I would have never been able to do it without you. So stepping up starting this year, I hope that you have stepped up. If you only started seeing us this year, if you've been with us from that other journey, I trust that your journey will remain as amazing as it, it can be. And also, remember to step up. That's all it is. My name is TJ Tara Jack. I will see you again at the Step Up Conference 2022. For now, enjoy your success. To your success. Cheers. <laughs>